So hello and welcome here to a new tutorial on the Industrial Digital Alchemy and today I want to present you the new release of Redshift for Houdini with the Solaris edition. Yes, you can now render Redshift in Solaris in Houdini 20.5 and how you can do that we will discover now here in this tutorial. So many may have suffered the installation from Redshift 20.5 for Houdini and what I found out there is an awesome tutorial available from the Create Visions channel and when you look up in YouTube for Redshift Houdini 20.5 you will find this wonderful tutorial and I really recommend you to watch it to make uh, Redshift work at your end at your computer and what I'm going to do is to uh, do a little summarization of what um, is done in this wonderful tutorial here. So first of all, before you install uh, Redshift, make sure that you have the latest version. You can do that with the Max, Maxon app from uh, Maxon directly. Install everything on your machine. And when you then discover some render issues in terms it won't render or the license is not set you can do that easily with the Maxon app which is here where you can pretty much define and set up everything for your purchased licenses so after the installation make sure you go to redshift.maxon.net and you go to the new version announcement builds and go here right to the users and in the users you have to look for a specific individual that uh, made some adjustments to the installation files which we then need to download directly from the Maxon user, uh, user group so here you have to look for Eugenio Gonzalez and he is um, providing the advanced installation files for Redshift. So download here the plugins for the latest Houdini version you want to use in 25 and you will be redirected to a Dropbox file where you can then download everything, the one for the Redshift Houdini version and one for the Solaris Houdini version. So download these, extract these and make sure that you have everything in place to make a replacement on the Houdini files uh, I want to show now. So once you downloaded everything, make sure that you have the two folders here, the Redshift Houdini folder and the Redshift Solaris folder. When you go right inside of this um, folder, you see here we have a Solaris version for the specific Houdini version. And right click on this version, copy, and then we replace it in the folder of the Redshift Houdini uh, creation. After that, you enter here Z um, program data Redshift plugins, and you can go right to the Houdini folder and put in here the um, version for Houdini from the extracted file. Replace it and make sure you do the same for the Solaris folder, also 20.5370. And once that, once you did that, um, you can start uh, up Houdini, and you may uh, get an error from the OpenIO color management. So remember that OpenIO uh, is the color management that interchanges between different software packages like 3D Studio Max, Maya, Blender, whatsoever. And we need to adjust that with the with the following steps. 
So you go to um, opencolor.io.org and here you can go to the documentation tab and then you can click here on the quick start for artists. You will then find a download link here where you can go to the Okio version 2 ACES configuration. So click that and you will redire be redirected to the GitHub. And in the GitHub, we want to download pretty much here version 2.4 of the CG config. And that is wrong. We need to we need to click open color IO version 2.3.0. Then scroll down and here you have the source code. You can then download and extract to your computer. Uh, make sure that you have your mm, directory file path in mind once you extracted everything on your machine. Uh, because now we have to set a global variable for Houdini to recognize um, the open color IO management from ACES also for Redshift. So on Windows 11 you enter your system environment variables in the um, Windows tab and then this little window um, appears here and in the environment variables we can click here and create here a new va variable that I already called uh, um, Okiko and here you can see that's the name of our color management and in the in the um, in the variable we set the path to the extracted open color IO folder and make sure that you then make access here to the ACES version 11321 Okiko file. Um, I will show you now where, where to find that in the Okiko downloads. And once you have set up this correctly without any um, uh, markers and, and brackets and stuff like that, then you hit OK, hit OK, OK, and then uh, you can fire up Houdini again. So here are the config files. Can you see they are, in my case, are at Z open color IO source open color IO build, built in configs and configs. And the first one is the one we reference in our um, environment variable I showed you before. So you can go right click, comp copy as, as, as path, and then you can set up this in your environment variable. So once this is done, we go back to Houdini and we can fire up Redshift. And we can see now that in the color settings, here we have sRGB. We set this to REC and we set this to ACES01. And you now can start using Redshift the old um, way, the, the, um, the way you are used to it. And um, there's also uh, some, some problems many people have with mega scans in, in Houdini 25. So I found out that in Houdini you can. Um, use the Houdini launcher to install the Houdini uh, Megascans package um, by um, the same way you do the labs download. So the labs is something where you go to, um, for example, where you can update labs and start the launcher. And here's the launcher and here in the labs packages folder, you see that here Megascans is available for download and also some others. So go and hit install to choose out the correct version you use in Houdini. And once you have Megascans installed, it should appear also in your 
menu like uh, you know from from different versions and with the bridge installed we can take some cool models here i set this already to redshift and now you can see that our bucket is here in the scene with the materials of redshift already applied and how this is looking in the lob environment i will show you now so hit tab create a lob network dive inside and in, create a sop import in the sop import we reference to the old bucket and we have it now in the scene here now we want to adjust the materials so make a material library go back to your materials pick your materials here pick them copy them and asset we go back to the lob net we put them down here and make a redshift usd material so this is the new material that makes a lot of crashes as you can see here live <laughs> so you need to take the bucket material not inside the ones the redshift material boulder go back to your scene make the lob net again so again a sub import cause it to shape operator and then we pick the bucket make the material again so and now copy it inside make the usd material from redshift then you can go into the bucket copy everything out go to the usd material and here you have everything inside what you don't need here is the redshift material and mm, you don't need this material because it's no usd material so we have here the albedo the albedo goes right in the base color specular in the reflection specul in the reflection color we have the roughness into the reflection roughness displacement here in the displacement and the bump goes into the bump map of our redshift usd material so you can then delete the old one rename it properly bucket and then we go to assign a material so make autofill reassign it can choose to solaris and can go into the lob net again and here we have our bucket uh, part so make sure that you pick up the first one and then make sure that you also pick up the second one and this is also our bucket material and in the assignment we go we also take the bucket primitive choose the bucket material apply make another instance um, make the number one here and we take the bucket and then we gonna pick up also a redshift physical sky make a camera and you now can see here that our bucket is unshaded so let's make sure that you go here to the redshift solaris panel and let's see what's going on you can see now how everything is textured in the redshift solaris environment and this is how you install the redshift for solaris and make solaris work with also the megaskins assets from 
the Quixel bridge and remember that Quixel will, will uh, move very very soon to the lab environment. A uh, fab environment that means that fab is the big marketplace that um, unites a lot of different marketplaces in one and from there there will be new ways to import assets purchase assets sell assets and so on so i hope you learned something and when you still have questions write me in the comments i know it's not an easy topic but um, especially for mega scans and for redshift i think you should keep in mind to look for redshift 20.5 in the youtube channel and there is a lot of uh, great uh, help from the create visions channel so thanks for watching like if you uh, um, subscribe if you like and have a great time